hello. So I am starting a new reading blog and I'm very excited about it. Uh, so this reading blog is specifically going to be three different books, but it's also because I still have little sushi roll here and he is a little chub monster. Um, and I just really like having footage to look back on uh, when cats are kittens so that I can be like, look how little they were and it was so cute. Um, so in case you guys are new here, this is my current foster. He is a chunky, chunky, chunky boy. He has one really bad eye that is getting better and no tail. Who needs a tail when you're a manx? So getting to the books that I want to be reading for this vlog, they are three of like my most anticipated like mainstream romance books. Um, of the year and they don't come out for a while and I somehow managed to get approved for these on NetGalley and I'm ridiculously excited for them. So up first, actually I don't know what order I'm reading these in, but up first I have The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, the third book in the Kiss Quotient series. I actually don't know what the series title is, but it's The Kiss Quotient, The Bride Test, and The Heart Principle is book three. And this book I feel like was never going to happen. It was one that just got bumped back so many times and I am so ridiculously excited that I actually like have it in my hands. I have it on my Kindle. You know, it's the same thing. Um, so I have that. I have All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This is the, I don't know if it's a direct sequel. I know it involves the same characters, so I'm gonna go with sequel, but it's a sequel to Spoiler Alert, which I'm so excited for. Hello! Um, and then, oh my gosh, probably my most anticipated one, I have Well Matched by Jen DeLuca, the third book in the Renaissance Fair series. This is like one of my personal favorite romance series of all times just because I am the biggest Renfair nerd. So I just figured this would be a good opportunity to document the process and let you guys know if all of these sequels are worth it, if they are uh, ones that I'm going to rank five stars, if they are ones that I'm going to order physical copies of, probably the answer is going to be yes for all of these. But I have my little reading buddy here. Um, he is looking at a bug that's outside the window right now. And I am going to get to reading. That's all I have planned for this vlog. I just want to read those three books and get cute footage of little Potato here because he's so stinking cute and he's getting very big. He is probably going to go and get <laughs> fixed and vaccinated and tested and microchipped and all that good stuff next week. So we'll see how long this vlog goes. We might, we might have some of that at the end of this. I don't know how long it's going to take me to read these three books, but I'm starting with... The heart principle, I want to say. Right, so I'm only two chapters into this book and I already want to punch somebody in the face. What? Um, also, look at this distinguished gentleman. What a literate little creature. Oh my goodness, he is so cute. Okay, so update for the heart principle. I'm only like a quarter of the way through. I think I'm like 20 something percent in. Um, I am loving it so far. I forgot how easy these books read where you can just sit down and be like, I'm just gonna read a chapter. And next thing you know, like you've made it like a quarter of the way through the book. Um, so this is reminding me a lot of the kiss quotient already like it's a very similar premise but like we know the characters now we know like how the writing works and everything so i feel like it's gonna be better um from what i'm gathering so far the rep that is going to be in this book is going to be cancer patient slash recovery um that I was not expecting. So that might be a triggering thing for people to keep an eye out on. But so far, it's not on page. It's in the past. Um, and I am assuming Anna, who is our heroine in this book, is going to be the autism rep. Um, but I have been kind of curious because the series is basically touted as having good autism rep because Helen Huang is autistic and she writes really good own voices stories. So I was kind of curious if she was going to continue that with the entire series. Not because I was worried that it was going to get repetitive, but I was just kind of curious how she was going to handle um, the odds of every single one of her heroes or heroines going to be autistic. And it hasn't been fully addressed yet, but I'm assuming Anna is kind of supposed to 
represent that but it hasn't actually been discussed and I'm honestly kind of hoping that it doesn't because she is a very like self-aware um, person and she regularly from chapter one discusses going to therapy and um, how she gets overstimulated by things and how she handles things as far as like anxiety goes or just like social situations which to me is honestly reading more like social anxiety and I'm kind of learning over the past like month or two for some reason I've just been doing a lot of research into this there are so many crossovers with um being introverted with social anxiety and with autism all of these things have a lot of very similar characteristics and can present differently in each person so I'm wondering how many like diagnoses are out there that are one but should be the other and it's just something that I've been thinking about a lot recently because as somebody who is extremely introverted and somebody who is um diagnosed with social anxiety there's a lot of overlap but that does not mean that you are one and the other so I'm starting to realize there's a lot of similar things that coincide with autism that are very similar as far as like overstimulation um because to me like sounds are very overstimulating does that mean I am autistic or am I just very introverted and I get overstimulated easily by specific triggers and you know what I'm talking about this is a discussion for another day but um I'm assuming Anna is that character, but we are getting a very similar plot to the Kiss Quotient. Not the same, but I loved the plot line. I liked the tropes that it plays on. So this is following Anna, who um, her long-term boyfriend basically kind of broke it off, kind of decided to um, explore other avenues before he commits to marrying her. Basically, he's a complete dick. Um, and it's just like, I know that you're the one for me and I know I want to marry you and have kids with you one day, but I just want to sleep with other people just to make sure. Like, that's the opening to the book and she's just like, um, okay. So she very quickly puts herself out there and is like, if you're doing this, I'm doing this too because screw you. Um, so she basically just meets up with Quan from like a dating app and their first like, meeting does not go well and I feel like it's just going to be a very cute relationship that's going to mostly be like messaging and like watching movies together but like separately and they're just going to be like texting each other which is one of my favorite things it's so cute it just speaks again to my introverted heart um and so far I just am loving both of the characters so much so I again I'm not very far into it but that's like the basic premise so far and I am so digging it so today is my day off I kind of want to just binge the whole thing but that is where I am with the book I'm excited Hello and good morning. So reading update. I have finished The Heart Principle. Um, okay, so let's talk about it. I think I'm giving it four stars, but I have a lot of stipulations with those four stars. It was fantastic. It touched on really, really important topics. It was not fun to read. Um, it is not the light and fluffy rom-com that the cover makes it look like it's going to be. It's not happy and romantic like the first couple books are. It's heavy. And I am going so far as to classify it more as, God, I hate this term, women's fiction. I'm just going to call it fiction. Why does it need to be specified that it's women's fiction? Um, by the way, I've got the little nugget in my lap who is just chilling. Um, anyway, <laughs> it uh, it's not romance focused. There is a romance in it and the romance is fantastic, but I would not consider that the main um, thing that moves the plot forward. This very much focuses on Anna, who is our main character, and her growth as a character. It tackles a lot of really heavy stuff, and it's not light and happy. Um, so real quick, content warnings for this book. Um, sudden terminal illness of a family member, grief, um, ASD diagnosis, um, cancer patient uh, in the past, not on page, um, so it, it covers a lot of really heavy topics, which is not abnormal for Helen Huang's books. I feel like her first two books did that, but it balanced it really well with like the fun romance part. I don't think that the balance was there between the really, really heavy stuff and the fun romance part, which is fine. It doesn't have to be. 
Um, but I honestly would not consider this a romance just because it's that's not the forefront of the entire book. Like to the point where I was like angry or upset for a majority of the time I was reading this book, rightfully so, like you should feel those feelings. Um, there's a lot of like gaslighting from family members in it. Um, there's just a lot of like unhealthy relationships. And the whole point of the book is basically for our main character is to basically realize that and learn how to start setting boundaries, learn how to stick up for herself and learn how to really come into who she realizes she is as a person. Um, and Quan, who is our love interest, just kind of helps her through that. And my only con that I have of this book is that I wanted more of Quan. Quan was the hero that I've been waiting so long for. And I feel like he was not really in the book much at all. And he didn't need to be for the sake of the story. I just wanted more of him. Um, I wanted more of his like backstory. I wanted to get to know him a little bit more, but most of the story focused on Anna. Um, so that being said, it was still fantastically written. You can tell it was very, very personal to Helen Huang. The author's note basically talks about how a lot of what happened in this book, she was drawing from personal experience. And you can tell because it's very personal. I think this is her first book that she wrote in first person. I think the first two were written in third. Um, so it's a rough go, but it's so worth reading. It's It covers a lot of stuff that I'm glad that I learned about. So I'm making, I'm kind of dragging this book, but I feel like it's just kind of important to know that this is not going to be like a little rom-com that you think it's going to be. So that being said, I also started All the Feels by Olivia Dade. And I think this one is going to be <laughs> what I kind of need after that book. I think this is actually going to be somewhat light and fluffy. This is the follow-up to Spoiler Alert. And the first book basically like set the tone for what I think these books are going to be. And this one reads very similar to the first one so far. Um, we have really good plus size representation and beauty standard representation so far in this book, um, both on the male side and the female side. And I like the approach that Olivia Day does with this. Um, so that's really cool. And it's kind of a similar storyline to the first one. Basically, we're following a male cast member of the show that is supposed to kind of be like a fictionalized Game of Thrones type of story. Um, it's like a huge hit. He's super Hollywood famous. So we're following a very attractive actor who it's already very outspoken about having ADHD and seems to have some spontaneous violent tendencies, as in like he gets into bar fights and stuff a lot. So um, his assistant and the show basically assigns him a babysitter essentially he basically ends up with this woman as his like nanny basically she is there to um keep him from giving the show a bad name as in like making public disturbances or just like spoiling things of the show and that nature so enter our female lead who is a very serious very short and round and take no shit type of girl and i love her already but what I find really interesting is this book has the grumpy and sunshine trope, which is one of my favorite tropes in romance, but it's the opposite. It's the girl is the grump and the guy is the little happy-go-lucky sunshine bouncing around, making everybody happy character. I love it. I love that take on it so far. Um, so that being said, I am pretty sure that we are going to learn so much about both of the characters. I'm pretty sure... Um, the guy is Alex is his name. I'm pretty sure Alex is going to be basically the onion of the story. He seems very simple. He seems very like kind of similar to the first book where you see that he is very easily perceived as being like just a dumb, hot Hollywood actor. And I'm sure we are going to unravel him like an onion and see the reasoning behind a lot of his antics and all of those things. And he is probably going to draw her out of her shell and show her the fun things in life. So far, I'm digging it. I also love just like the nerdy representation in it. We still have fan fiction in this because he is reading a lot of the fan fiction that we saw written in the first book about his character Cupid on the show. Um, and I'm pretty sure God, I hope there's going to be pegging involved because that was like a running joke in the first book. So that is my reading update as of right now. Here is my potato update. Look how long his legs are getting. Um, And yeah, so that is my current check-in. Hello. Okay, I don't have much of a reading update, but I have a sushi update. Uh, so, oh, oh, I dropped you. I'm sorry. So this little nugget went and got neutered and tested and microchipped and vaccinated and guys happy news oh god he is stretching for the stars 
he tested negative for everything, which means he could totally stay in my household. So uh, here's a fun little sneak peek announcement. Uh, guess who is a member of the family? That little potato. So good times. Look at that little nubbin. I can't handle it. It's so cute. It's so cute. Come here. Come here. Hi. So, um, also update for his eye. The vet looked at it. It's pretty much as good as it's going to get. Um, I'll try and put like pictures in of what it looks like, but it's going to basically have that cloudy scarring on the front of it for the rest of his life, which is honestly, it's okay considering we were expecting him to lose the eye. So that's good progress. We're just going to chill right there. Okie dokie. Um, I don't have much of a reading update. I'm like 30% of the way into all the feels and I'm really liking it, but uh, I've just been really busy last night and this past weekend was 4th of July weekend, which is always a ridiculously busy time when you work at a shelter because uh, that's like the worst holiday ever for uh, pets. So where are you going, little adventurer? Okay, we got him back. Oh, nope, nope. We don't run into cameras. Um, so that's literally all that I have for an update. I'm just really excited because that is such like a weight off of my shoulders uh, because that means I can start introducing him to the rest of the family, which is very exciting. I will try and get footage of that. I don't think it's going to go smoothly because he is way too similar to Cricket. Um, and she is a slightly like dominant, oh gosh, type of character. Uh, so I feel like the two of them are going to butt heads. Albus is still scared of himself, so they probably won't meet for like, you know, a couple of years. It'll take a while for Albus to warm up to him. Look at his little butt. Um... Willow will just be the queen of the household. And he's already met Manny. Manny is a dog, so he was safe to meet Manny. Um, until I knew if he was contagious of any kind. What? Oh, okay. We attacked my butt. Cool. Fun. <laughs> um, that's all I really have for an update for you guys. Ooh, I have a Hello Lovely package. I have two Hello Lovely packages that I really want to open. I'm going to do that in this video. Let me go grab them. Okay, we got two. These are just orders that I placed uh, by myself. This one feels different. I'm gonna go with this one first. Um, I placed an order because I really wanted to get an order in of her pride stuff in the month of June because she also was making like a donation um, in the month of June. All of these things I think are still available to purchase right now. It just wasn't part of the donation thing. Um, so, oh my God, these are so cute. So they're both white, which is, you know, look at me branching out. I'm wearing my goat shirt, uh, branching out of my black shirt comfort zone. Uh, Y'all, it's hot. It's real hot. So the idea of just wearing like a black t-shirt right now in like 100 degree weather, it's just, it's not that appealing. So we have this one, which is so cute. It says, read what you want, dress how you want, kiss who you want, love who you want, be who you want. Reach it. How cute is this? I'm honestly thinking about just like, I was either gonna cut this and make it a crop top or I was just gonna start um, doing the little knot thing, like tie it up really cute because I'm I'm learning how to be trendy. I'm trying at least. Um, and that's like the cool thing to do nowadays is like high-waisted pants, high crop top. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Okay, this other one is so cute. I don't even remember seeing her like list this one like in part of the announcement of the pride stuff um but it was on the website and i was like i have to have that that is so cute this one is oh, shake it out is a rainbow bookshelf how cute is that it has little crystals and little plants everywhere how cute is that this is like the cutest design ever i love it so much oh my gosh i love this i love this so much so i got that one and then one more package. I'll be quick. Hold on. Oh, this one has a tear thing. Hallelujah. This one is not part of the pride thing, but it's one of her newer releases. And I just, oh, this does feel wonderful. Um, this is the dark romance. It's a hoodie. Can I flip it? It's a hoodie. <laughs> There's a hood. Um, it's a cropped hoodie and it's a dark romance reader one. It says good reads, bad guys, wild love. Um, and it has like the little skeleton hand holding the rose. So it's a dark romance readers shirt, um, but it is a cropped hoodie, but it's not actually like a hoodie. So like it has a hood that's cool and everything, but it's essentially just like t-shirt material. So it's super thin and it cuts off right there. And you guys know that I discovered that I liked crop hoodies. Like I didn't think that I would like crop tops on me until I got the read more romance one. And then I got all of them. So basically whenever she comes out with crop shirts, 
I get really excited. And this is like the perfect, really lightweight, like summery thing because it's not heavy. It's just a little thin t-shirt material. It's so comfy feeling. <sighs> so those were my recent Hello Lovely purchases that I just bought myself. <laughs> I was just really excited over the pride stuff and I want to contribute to the pride. A contribution that she was doing for the month of June. So that's what I did. Okay, I am going to start slowly introducing the pets and I will try and get footage for you. It probably won't be much because I want to pay attention to the situation and not to a camera, but I'll try and get some footage for you guys. Okay, I figured I'd just do a voiceover, but this was literally the very first meeting. I missed the very beginning where Sushi literally ran smack into uh, Cricket's face because he's not graceful, but look how calm she is. She's so good. Ah, she's like the best big sister to introduce babies to because she was this way with Alvis as well. This clip will say otherwise. Um, watch out, Sush. You kind of deserve this. Okay. Okay. But uh, he got so much better and Alvis said, oh, hell no. Okay. Hi. Hello. This is the update that we have. We're making progress, but I have a baby gate set up. This is like what you're actually resting on is a baby gate. Oh, look at the little potato being adorable with a toy. So reading update. Um, I finished all the feels. It was delightful and adorable. So I'm giving it four stars. It was a solid rom-com that had really good representation in it. Um, it's very similar to the first one, as in it's like super attractive, hunky Hollywood actor man, and like a plus size, non-conventionally beautiful girl, um, which is we love to see it. We love that. Um, and also there's good representation for like ADHD, self-image. Um, there is abuse in the past, not on page and not dealing with our main characters, but it is something that is discussed in the book. But okay, so I loved it. I loved all of the tropes and I loved how self-aware it was of tropes. Here, we'll try and angle it down so you guys can see the kittens. Um, Cricket is a really good big sister. She's really good with introductions, so I'm starting with her mainly. So yeah, there were a lot of tropes in it. It was very much grump and sunshine, only reversed. Female sunshine, male, no, female grump, male sunshine. It was adorable. Um, but it was also super aware of romance tropes, which I adored. Like there is an only one bed scene and they are like, like, I laughed through the entire scene because Alex is just like, this is my favorite trope. Are you serious? There's only one bed and the air conditioning is permanently running on high. So we have to use each other for body heat. This is my favorite trope. So it's very self-aware of tropes, which was really funny. Um, the only thing that I kind of missed from the first one is it was not super nerdy. One of my favorite things um, from the first book was how much like fan fiction rep was in it. Oh, I guess we're going into the bedroom. Um, but one of the first things that I loved about the first book was how much like fan fiction and nerdy goodness was in it because I feel like that was something I could really identify with. Um, and that's like a little bit in it. Um, Alex kind of starts to read the fan fiction. If you guys read the first one, you know that like pegging is a big thing that he discovered was written into his character's fan fictions. Um, so it's a little bit in there, but it's not nearly as much. And that was like the big selling point of the first book was like all of these fun like tropes and representations and all of these things, plus nerdiness. Um, and this one is just like slightly removed from that. So um, I gave it four stars. It's a really good rom-com book. It was very easy and fun to read. Um, and those are my thoughts on it. I have already started Well Matched and I'm already so excited because it's Mitch's story. We've been waiting for Mitch's story. Um, and I think this is also perfect timing because it's July as I'm filming this and doing this vlog. Um, and my Ren Fair season doesn't start until the end of August. Pennsylvania's Ren Fair does not. It runs like really late summer into fall. So it runs from August until Halloween weekend. Um, so for me, the Ren Fair is like late, steamy, humid, muggy summer heat, and then crisp fall weather. Like that's the season that I associate it with. Um, and we aren't quite there yet. So this is like getting me hyped up because I think mine will be open this year. I am vaccinated. We can go to things now. I don't know why I'm filming this way because nobody's there anymore. They went into the bedroom. Um, but it's like getting me super excited for Ren Fair season. So I have a feeling I'm going to fly through this. I have the day off today, so basically the entire day is going to be doing kitten introductions in the household and reading. 
that's it. I'm probably gonna literally sit in my hallway and um, read with my baby gate so that we only do one cat introduction at a time or we're gonna feed through the gate. I haven't decided how we're doing this yet, um, but I'm, I'm pretty well versed in introducing pets to the household at this point in my life. So I think it'll be fine. Whoa, we came bursting out of the hallway and back in. Okay, we have the zoomies. Um, so that's my update. I will check in when I have made progress on Well Matched. I am, how far am I into it? Like under 10%, I'm like on chapter two, but I just really wanted to start it this morning. Um, I am 7% in, so I will let you guys know my thoughts on that as I read. quick update this little dude went to the vet for the first time yesterday like the big kid vet um i just kind of wanted a second opinion on uh if his eye basically is as good as it's gonna get and she basically said yeah it might shrink down a little bit on its own but nothing at this point that i can do to make it better um how'd you shove that under the chair that toy lasted two seconds um but he was a champion. He was a brave little toaster at the big kid vet. And now I have him wandering around the library, which is so fun. The only other really exciting thing that I'm not positive if it's gonna come out this way or not. Um, she thinks that he actually might have some munchkin in him. Like, you know, munchkin cats, the ones with like tiny little legs, just because his little front legs are so short compared to his back legs. And they're kind of like bowed, like a bulldog. Um, which might be a Manx trait because Manx tend to have longer back legs than front legs. Uh, but she was just like, we're going to have to see how he evens out. But being three months old, his front legs should be longer by now. So he might also be part munchkin, which is the cutest thing in the entire world. Do I ever want to promote that breed in the world? No. But if I happen to stumble across one in this tiny little kitten, I'm all for it. So basically no tail, one bad eye, potential tiny munchkin. He is just a mixed bag of broken parts and I love him so much. So he's off being a brave little adventurer somewhere in the hallway. But um, so reading update. <laughs> so I started uh, Well Matched and I'm so glad that I saved this book for last because I knew that this was probably going to be my favorite of the three that I was reading for this vlog. <gasps> Hello. Um, and I am like 45% of the way into it already. I started it last night and I'm already almost halfway through because it just reads so easily. Jen DeLuca's writing just like speaks to my soul. Um, one, I think it helps you guys in first person. I tend to speed through first person books way quicker than I do third person. Um, and I mean, it's obviously, it's Renfair stuff. We haven't really hit the Renfair part yet. The Ottoman is blocking him. Um, but it is Mitch and April's story. And Mitch is the character that everybody loves. He is the man in the kilt. He is like the hunky, hunky man who wears the kilt at the Ren Fair that everybody swoons over. So it's his story. And it's April, who is um, Emily's older sister. At the very beginning of Well Met, um, we see Emily, who is our first protagonist in the series, um, move in with her sister after she had a really bad car accident and she needed help um with her daughter because she was a single mom so we are getting her story whoa finally and i am loving it so far it's fake dating um and it's kind of similar to all the feels it's kind of grump and sunshine because mitch is also just like a sunshiny happy-go-lucky dude who obviously has some layers to him and april is kind of like a jaded um older single mom who doesn't really think she has it anymore uh, and I'm loving it. And he basically convinces her to act as his girlfriend for like a family reunion type thing. And she takes that as a chance to have him then help her renovate her house. So 
I am loving it so much. It is so good. We aren't even close to Ren Fair stuff yet, but we have really good like family dynamics and we have really good like scenes of the characters that we met in the first two books. Hey, no scary pants. And I'm loving it so much. So that's just my update. I have a feeling I'm going to finish it within the next like day or two, just because it reads so quickly and so easily. We've already had in only one bed trope. I love me some forced proximity, as we know from the last book. So I am digging it. That's my update. Alrighty, final update time. So I just finished Well Matched. Who's surprised that it took me like a day to read? Nobody. Um, it was my favorite of the three, which again, nobody is shocked by that. So I just love this series so much. So this is Mitch and April's story, and it's like fake dating, um, small town, kind of grump and sunshine. I feel like all of the books were kind of like that this time. Um, kind of a little bit of that. I wouldn't really classify it as Grump and Sunshine, but uh, it's still the same dynamic as all the feels. Female Grump, male Sunshine. But I have just been waiting for Mitch's story since book one. Like, we all got to meet Mitch. He was like the hunky, hunky man in the kilt in the first book and in the second book. So we finally get to see him and get to see like his family and his dynamics and everything. And I just adore him to pieces. But what was really cool about this book was that it followed a lot of April, who is our heroine in this book. And she is a single mom and she's older. This is an age gap story um, where the female is like 10 years older than the male. I don't know why I phrase it that way. <laughs> so there's age gap in this also, but she is a single mom and her daughter is about to go off to college. So she's kind of starting to get that like empty nest feeling of like, I should like prepare my house to sell it because I don't want to live in this big empty house alone. Um, so she's like really struggling with like finding her identity after being the single mom for so long. And she has always had it in her head that like when her daughter goes off to college, she's going to move on and start her life over. Um, so the fake dating part comes in because Mitch needs a date to like a family reunion type thing. So they work out a deal where she basically plays his girlfriend for all of his family events and he helps her fix up this house to sell. That's the main plot line of the book. And of course, over the course of the book, they actually start to fall for each other. And April is really struggling with the fact that like she's trying to gear up to move on with her life. And instead, she finds that she's kind of settling back down more than she thought she would. And it was just wonderfully paced. I loved both of them. Um, I really liked April's character because she very clearly is a very introverted person. Um, and it's not really set on page, but I'm going to go with she's got some pretty severe social anxiety because there is a lot of internal commentary about how people are going to perceive her in public. Like um, when she's out and about and doing things, she's constantly worried about like self-image and how people are looking at her, which hello, uh, social anxiety here. That's what my brain is like all the time. So that was actually really refreshing to see on page. And it wasn't overbearing. It was just like every now and then a line would be tossed in where I was like, oh, I can relate to that a little too hard. Um, so what was interesting, though, when we bring in the Renaissance Fair aspect is that she is not one of like the Ren Fair nerds. Um, so it was kind of cool to see her get like introduced to that element of the story because she's very skeptical about the whole thing. She doesn't really understand the appeal of it. And then she starts to volunteer for the last summer just to like hang out with her daughter. Um, 
and she really starts to embrace like the magic of the Renaissance Fair is this magical little place where adults get to play dress up and play make believe and it's totally acceptable plus you get to get drunk while you're there and do it like there's nothing else really like that in the world where you get to be a kid again and it's totally acceptable so she kind of starts to get introduced to that. She's very uncomfortable at first. She doesn't understand why people talk in accents. She doesn't understand the costumes. But then she just kind of gets swept up into it. And it just made me so happy because it was such a cool perspective. Because I've been a Red Fair nerd my whole life. So I never really went into that phase of having to like kind of embrace it. But a lot of my friends have. I've introduced a lot of my friends to the fair. So... Like I said, it was kind of like getting to be at the fair when I haven't been able to go because obviously I didn't go last year because hello pandemic. So going back to Willow Creek is just like a little warm hug of like all of my favorite nerdy people that I get to revisit every year. And God, I hope there's more. I don't know if there's going to be more. I would love to see Caitlin's story in the future. Caitlin is her daughter. If she's 18, she's going off to college. I would love to see her future story. I don't know if she's going to write that or not. She introduced Lulu, who is a cousin of Mitch, that I feel like we focused on her a little bit more than a normal side character, so she might potentially come in. But this also could just be the end. It might just be a trilogy, and that's it. And it did wrap up really well. I feel like it settled in, like, a good place. But I will forever want books in this world. I just want more Ren Faire books, and this is, like, the perfect combination of, like, my nerdy goodness and swoony small-town romance, and it's just... It's me in a book series, and I love it so much. The sex scenes were phenomenal. In case you think this is just going to be like a light, fluffy rom-com, there is some steam on page, and it is fantastic. Her sex scenes have just gotten better each book. Um, and I just, I don't know. I feel like it's the epitome of like the female gaze is why I like these books. You know, that's been in like discussion a lot lately on how things that we find very attractive are very specific moments not just like a shirtless dude and I liked that Mitch was always just the shirtless dude he was the hot guy who wore a kilt that everybody swooned over at the fair and there was a lot of like little tiny moments that were way more attractive than just like his physical stuff so oh, it was just so good I gave it five stars it was my favorite of the three that I read even though all three were really really good that's the one that I'm probably going to think about the most so that is going to conclude this reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to recommend all three of the books, specifically Well Matched. I love this series so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed your sushi fix and the good news about sushi. I'll probably make a separate video like talking about sushi and stuff, but you guys get like a sneak peek of what's going on. He's staying forever. No, Literally nobody is shocked by that because he is so, oh, he's so cute. He's the best. Um, so there you go. There's a little behind the scenes thing for those of you who watch my vlogs. And I will see you guys in my next video.